Hi, Mike Cooper here. This is the first part of a two-part video about why I chose an RV, uh, which kind I chose, and what options I chose when I actually purchased it. In this video, this first part, we'll take it from why I started looking at RVs to what I would use one for, to describe the different types of RVs there are, through to what I thought would be a really good fit, which was a travel trailer. Links to the second part are in the description below and at the end of this video. So, let's get right into it. Hi, Mike Cooper here. This video is for those friends and family who wanted to know why I chose the RV I did, and anybody else who's interested in my buying thoughts and process. If you're thinking of getting one, then what's right for you is a very personal decision based on your own needs and budget. You may find nothing here that's helpful to you at all. Um, I've actually just ordered an RV. Uh, it's a Class B, a Coachman Beyond 22C all-wheel drive with uh, lithium batteries, and I ordered it from my local Massachusetts dealer, Flag RV. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see why I ended up with this choice. But first, a message from my wife so you know she's okay with the purchase. Hello, I'm Claire. I am Mike's wife. So although I'm not that interested in RVing, I have approved his purchase and I'm sure once I try RVing, I'll really love it. So I'm generally interested in science, fact, outdoor-based shows and readings such as How It's Made, Gold Rush, House Improvement Shows, Man vs. Wild, Nature Documentaries, and so on. Um, but I will also watch artistic shows and dramas. Then uh, a couple of years ago, I found um, RV shows on TV, things like uh, Going RV, um, Stream RVs, and so on. And uh, I kind of got hooked on those a little bit. I started to wonder, what would I like as an RV? What do I think might suit me? And um, this was uh, basically sort of an intellectual exercise, just a fun thing to do. Um, I stopped work about a year and a half ago and uh, wasn't sure if I wanted to have a full-time job after that. Um, so I had plenty of time. Even uh, shortly thereafter, I started doing a part-time job for um, helping support a great human services agency. But I still had plenty of time to think about RVs. So I pretty much considered every single type of RV there was. Um, what I'm going to do is go through the different types, um, explain what they are, and uh, then go through in a bit more detail what my thinking was as I evolved from uh, thinking of one type of thinking another might be better, to thinking a different type might be better, and then what I actually ended up. So we'll talk about motorhomes first, and these come in three different sizes, Class A, Class B, and Class C. So within each class, there's a wide variety of different types to get, different um, manufacturers, different features, different functions, different price points, and so on. Um, the largest are the Class A. These are the coaches that you see trundling along down the road. Um, they're typically powered by diesel engines, although it is possible to get a, get a gas-powered one. Next in size comes the Class C. Don't ask me why it's C rather than B. I don't, they seem out of order to me, but I don't understand that. So a Class C is when the RV manufacturer buys the um, buys a cab with a chassis from a vehicle manufacturer, and then they add on the the body and uh, the insides. They kind of build the home on the inside of the body that they construct. Um, certainly in North America, the um, the typical van chassis that they would use will be a Mercedes Sprinter or a Ford Transit or a Dodge um, Ram Promaster. Um, larger Class Cs could use uh, the Ford E350, E450, or even E550. A Class B RV is um, similar to a Class C, but it, the uh, RV manufacturer gets the full chassis and body from the vehicle manufacturer and then builds their RV um, inside the body that they've been provided with. Uh, this takes a lot more work and effort than building a Class C because they've got, they're constrained by the um, existing shell of the, the vehicle and so therefore it's the most expensive type per square foot. You might sometimes hear of a Class B+, plus, um, which is really more of a marketing term because I don't think the insurance industry recognizes it. This is typically a van size Class C but without the sleeping cab over the, um, the sleeping bed over the, the cab of the van. So it's a little bit smaller. 
Tesla. So apart from motorhomes, you can of course get travel trailers which you pull behind. Um, these vary enormously in size from very large ones through medium ones and small ones um, to very tiny ones that are maybe teardrop shaped and just consist of a bed inside. Um, no standing room, you just kind of can sit in it. And then at the back on the outside, it might have a little kitchen area. So a fifth wheel is similar to a travel trailer, um, but it's different in that instead of being connected via the hitch to the tow vehicle, you have to have a truck and it's connected via the bed of the truck. And this makes it um, a lot more stable. And you can also get a truck camper, which is the, um, where the camper sits in the bed of the truck and the, the bed that you sleep on goes, extends over the, the cab of the truck. So apart from RVs, I actually considered other options. I've got a tent that I've used for many years. Well, I haven't actually used it recently for quite the last few years. Um, but uh, that certainly was an option to consider. It would certainly be a cheap option. Not quite the cheapest, though, because some people sleep in their car when they go camping. I've got a Subaru Outback, which is, I guess, perfectly amenable to uh, sleeping in, although it would, of course, be rather small. So um, I clearly couldn't move from just... Uh, thinking about RVs in a kind of fun way to seriously consider um, getting one without considering why would I want to get one and what would the main considerations be. So, and I'm going to look at my notes a little bit to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, so here's what I came up with. As I said before, I'm quite used to um, tent camping. So, um, you know, used to being uh, sleeping in the outdoors and so on. Um, as I was growing up with my family, we took a lot of boat trips um, on the rivers and uh, canals in England. In fact, we even owned a small boat a couple of times. So I was quite used to living in a small space for a week or two. Um, I like the outdoors. I like hiking, um, and uh, especially in uh, the western half of the US, which I don't get to do very often. Um, my favorite sport is orienteering, which um, if you don't know about it, you can think of it as like trail running, but you I uh, have to navigate your own way through um, a quite detailed map, um, usually going off trail. What else have I got? Yeah, mountain biking. Um, I got a mountain bike, so I want to do that in different parts of the country. Um, I don't like, uh, well, I'm not very good at technical single track mountain bike trails. Um, my thing is to really just sort of find forest roads and wider paths, but I, I like climbing hills on it. On it. It's actually much more so than going downhill. I'd have to obviously consider what uh, my wife would be comfortable with. Um, she, I wouldn't expect her to be with me all the time because RVing isn't really her thing. Um, but what are her needs for the times that she does come? Um, <clears throat> different parts of the US have different uh, family and friends. My daughter lives out in Seattle on the west coast, northwest US. Um, so that would be a good target to go to from Massachusetts. And I've got friends and family in various other parts of the US and Canada. Um, so then there is uh, exploring towns, um, perhaps more to my wife's liking than mine, although I do it. Um, so I've got to be giving some consideration to how you would go about doing that um, and what kind of constraints you'd have depending on what kind of um, RV you chose. I also would like to keep things simple if possible um, so that there's less things to break and less things to maintain. Although I know I can't predict the future, my general thoughts as to what I might use an RV for are one or possibly two multi-week trips extending through the um, perhaps the western half of the US or going south or just exploring places and visiting family and friends that I haven't seen for a long time. Some uh, much shorter trips of a few days going to orienteering events in different parts of the eastern US so I get to do some competitions outside of New England and um, perhaps just some short day trips where it'd be convenient to have a place to, um, uh, you know, cook and eat whilst they're traveling. It's often been said that you should really rent an RV before you buy one. I don't plan on doing that. In fact, I didn't do that uh, because, uh, well, I have a good way in my mind of mentally visualizing things. So uh, whilst looking at lots of YouTube videos and product placements and product websites, I felt that I could um, have a pretty good sense of what it would be like and also my past experiences uh, where I've been in um, small canal boats and so on. Uh, I think I have a pretty good idea of what it would be like to be, to be in one. 
So over the past year, I've been collecting lots of information, um, storing it in a document, uh, saving YouTube videos, and generally having a, a lot of fun doing research with um, occasional TV shows being good for research, but uh, most of it being uh, looking at product websites, looking on YouTube videos, and joining Facebook groups. There's a Facebook group for almost every type of RV, and often for uh, very specific RVs, so I found all these very useful. As part of that, I also started thinking about what would my dream RV look like. A um, bit hard to predict since I haven't actually spent any time in one to start with. But uh, I was collecting some ideas in case I ever win the lottery and uh, go to uh, perhaps a high-end um, RV manufacturer such as Advanced RV to do whatever I wanted. Okay, so now let's look in more detail about my thinking process and how I ended up deciding on a Class B and the Coachman Beyond in particular. I immediately discounted the, uh, the large Class A, the coach type vehicles. I didn't want to drive something that big and I was sure my wife wouldn't want to do that either, so that immediately got discounted. So it started seeming like a, a medium to small size Class C would be the largest vehicle that uh, I think would be appropriate. And um, not having a, a need for a bed above the cab space meant I could consider the so-called B plus types. I also didn't want to have a slide. Um, slides are what they sound like, where part of the wall uh, extends out as you, uh, when you've camped to give more interior space. They are, to my mind, you do get more space, which is great, but there's something that can go wrong and you hear lots of stories of slides getting stuck and um, just uh, didn't want that kind of uh, maintenance to deal with. So um, one last thing to keep it simple. So as I was doing my research, I particularly liked the um, interiors and relatively small size of the leisure travel vans. They got some great videos on their website. Um, they have a salesman doing them who uh, you think could uh, sell ice to Eskimos. So I don't want to get too carried away by that, but they did seem to have a, um, a good set of features. I started watching some uh, videos from the YouTube channel Creative Creativity RV. Uh, where Robin has a number of videos about uh, the leisure travel van that she used to have. She's moved on to something else since then. She had mentioned that sometimes there were challenges with maintenance when things broke because these are made in Canada and it can from time to time take a while to get uh, spare parts. And um, they are also manufactured on the Mercedes chassis, which although Mercedes is generally taken to be an extremely pleasant chassis to drive, vehicle to drive, uh, when compared to the Ford Transit and Dodge Ram Promaster. They are more expensive to maintain. Uh, the spare parts are more expensive and even things like a simple oil change is more expensive. So um, that was it. Leisure travel vans seemed to be the right kind of one, but there were some concerns that I had. I gradually started thinking more seriously about trailers because uh, Class C involves an engine. So and with a trailer, I could use my daily driving vehicle as a tow vehicle to keep things simpler and cheaper overall. So after doing quite a lot of research on trailers, I started to find that I was gravitating towards the Tab 400 by Newcamp. It's a teardrop style trailer. Uh, they have a uh, very good track record of customer service and building high quality vehicle, uh, high quality trailer, I should say. It's relatively small, around 18 foot in length, but it's got, you know, it's got everything you need to dine out a bed, a kitchen, a bathroom. Another possibility was the uh, Lance trailer. Uh, they have a lot of different um, floor plans, quite a few without slides, because I still wasn't interested in getting a slide. So as I got more serious about this, I started thinking, well, maybe I should just go to an RV show and try and see some in person. Um, a show would mean that I could see a lot together rather than just going to one particular dealer. And lo and behold, there was one coming up in the Worcester area in the next week. So that was great. At the show, I looked at uh, quite a few different categories of RVs. Although, to be honest, my main focus was on the small trailers. And uh, one of the things I found that surprised me uh, when I sat in the dinette in them, sometimes it would feel really uncomfortable uh, I have a week back, and um, maybe that was the reason. Some of them, though, were pretty comfortable. 
Uh, they didn't have a Tab 400 on display there, but the, uh, the dealer there, one of the local dealers, did have one at their premises. So in fact, it turned out that the next day I drove down to them, less than an hour away, and sat in a Tab 400. The height seemed fine, the bed was big enough, and the dinette was very comfortable. So that was great. I also looked at the Arpod 192 that they had, which uh, seemed like a good choice because it had a Murphy bed, which was a couch during the day, and I like lounging around, basically, in a couch. So that seemed like a, a really good option as well. So over the next few weeks, I spent quite a lot more time looking into trailers, uh, exploring details about how you tow them, learning about weight distribution hitches, sway bars, and so on and so forth. Looked at a lot of the videos on the YouTube channel Travels with Delaney, because they had a Tab 400 at that time. They moved on to something else, something a bit bigger. And uh, that was all really interesting stuff to, to figure out and explore in more detail. So one thing I had to consider was how to tow a Tab 400 or a trailer similar to that, because my Subaru Outback can't tow a trailer that heavy. It can only tow a really tiny trailer, so I started looking at the tiny trailers and looking at a YouTube channel called uh, Playing With Sticks. They were interesting to explore, um, but really, in the end, I didn't think they were very practical for me because, um, well, there's no inside toilet, which was a deal breaker for the wife, um, but also they have an outside kitchen typically, and I kind of felt like, um, since I live in an area with mosquitoes, that I would really prefer that uh, all the uh, amenities, if you will, be the features be available inside a trailer and not having to go outside for some things. So if I was going to tow a Tab 400, I'd have to get something to replace my Subaru Outback. I uh, did some online research, pretty interested in a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, there was also the um, Ford Explorer, and the uh, Subaru has their own uh, larger vehicle and a scent that can tow 5,000 pounds as well. So I spent uh, a day going around the Subaru, Ford and Jeep dealers, uh, trying out the vehicles. Didn't really like the Ascent or the Explorer. They both had third row seating, which I really don't need, not having kids anymore around the house, and just wasn't that comfortable in the driver's seat, whereas the Jeep Grand Cherokee felt really good. I never seriously considered a truck. Um, I did sit in one, but I really don't like the feel of uh, being in a truck, so discounted those. So um, I decided if I was going to get a Tab 400, then the Jeep Grand Cherokee would be a pretty reasonable tow vehicle, and that's where things were at that point. 